Greetings, Tony from Old River Hard Goods again. Welcome back to my channel in the year 2023. This one deals with some traditional woodworking tools. Some of them you're probably familiar with, some of them you may not. It's been kind of a fun ride so far, and I hope to keep being able to put these guys out. So, take a walk up to the bar, grab yourselves a drink. <laughs> And enjoy. First off, we're going to talk about some tools that uh, you don't see over here in the States too often. Uh, these all came from England, and these are called miter hooks. This one was made by Marples and Sons. Uh, Mark's kind of overstamped with the username. This one is Peace. These three over here are all solid wood. And it's a pretty simple tool to use. Poop. Simply put your stock at the end of the workbench, lay it on, and you're ready to cut your miters with. Couldn't get any easier than that, and it's a lot easier than digging out the big old miter box just to make a few simple cuts. And of course you can cut one way, cut the other way, pardon the mess underneath. A companion to this tool is called the uh, bench hook, as pictured here. Uh, this one was made from a single piece of wood. I saw this one oh, about a year and a half ago. And the individual that got it uh, still uses it today, so it must have been a pretty decent tool. These here are more specialized ones in that the insides have molding shapes to them. See that one, that one, a couple of mahogany ones here, and these of course for working with uh, sash and picture frames and whatever else you're doing. Gives you more, a little more control when you're making the cuts. Another uh, English tool that you don't see too often over here in the States is a sash template. This one was made by Routledge and Sons of Birmingham. They were tool dealers who worked from 1876 until 1944. This is used for trying or making sure that the sash is nice and even after it's been planed. This one was pieced. Two pieces of wood. Sometimes you find older ones that were very nicely made out of a single section of wood. And they are collectible. At least they used to be. And I have to say that since I started doing these videos, this is the longest that I've had this much free workman space here in a very long time. I had excavated this area out prior to going up to the Madison Bachville Antique Show up in New York back in August which I did pretty well at, but it got buried fast and stayed that way. So, at least you guys are doing me some bit of good. Here we have a vintage wooden framed turning saw. Blade on this is about 20, oh, 19, 20 inches long. No maker's mark. The frame is made of oak. The handles can be rotated around so that you can use a saw to cut out complex shapes. Blade has some rust on it, but it's still fairly sharp enough to use. This has a metal stretcher on it with a hand forged nut. Somebody added another nut up there as a spacer to keep it tight, but I just don't see too many of these guys around in this kind of condition anymore. Another tool I recently restored was this old adjustable beach bodied spoke shave. It doesn't have a maker's mark on it, but kind of looks like one of the English models. There's these two brass adjuster knobs on the top. And this is a plated shave because it's got the brass sole plate on it. 
Unfortunately, the iron does have some uh, pitting to it, blade. But finding these guys in working shape is not getting any easier to do. I mean, the adjusters work on this one, so that's a plus. And this was cleaned using pretty much the same techniques I used uh, in my wooden plane restoration video, if you happen to watch that. If you haven't watched it, I wholeheartedly recommend it. Here we have a pair of plane irons made by the F.G. Pearson Company of Sheffield, England. He was an edge tool maker who worked from 1821 until at least 1911. Now, the story behind these guys, I've been on a email list since 1995 called the Old Tools Group. And back sometime in the late 1990s, one of the guys posted on there that he'd been in an old hardware store in uh, down in New Orleans and found a whole bunch of new old stock irons by this maker and I grabbed a bunch of them thinking well and you could use them for plane restorations or other things and uh, kind of bought them and forgot them and back during the time of COVID let's loosen up the cap here a little so you can see how pretty they are back during COVID when there were no flea markets or tool shows or antique shows to go to, I started digging around in my basement looking for stuff to sell. And I pulled some of them out and sold them. And somebody else asked about a, an iron the other day, although he's looking for one and a quarter inch. But uh, I brought these out, cleaned them up, and got them ready to sell. Also, a few years ago, I found a couple of new old stock W Butcher irons. Two, I think they were two and a quarter inch. So one had the slot, meaning it was a double iron, like this. Uh, the other one was a single iron, and there was no slot in the middle. So, good pieces like this are still out there if you know where to look for them. Here we have a set of five marples boxwood handled bench gouges. Marples was the last of the great English edge tool makers still working in the traditional style. Boxwood, of course, used very heavily in the tool making industry. Not only is the boxing and molding planes, but it shows up in plow planes spoke shaves, rules, marking and mortising gauges, as well as turn screw and gimlet handles. I also had a set of three marples mortising chisels recently that had the boxwood handles on them. And they were really, really nice and gorgeous tools. Marbles, of course, later went to plastic handles and have since been acquired by Irwin. Of course, the quality is considered not to be as good by many folks, but these are still some of the best ones out there. Another tool that uh, folks may know or not know about are the gimlets, or gimlets, G-I-M-B-L-E-T as they were originally spelled over in England. These, of course, are little hand drills. They come in a variety of sizes. Handles are beech, sometimes boxwood, sometimes rosewood. Uh, king cutter made them with rosewood handles. This might be one of the king cutter ones, kind of hard to say. Um, here's a nice little one. And I kind of have a thing for these. Well, if you want to call it a thing. Uh, between what I got here at the shop and boxes of them that I got at the house, last count was about 350 or so. I kind of gave up counting a few years back. Well, I still buy them. I get some good ones in and I'll clean them up and sell them. These guys obviously haven't been cleaned too much. Uh, some interesting ones. 
this ratcheting one is made in Germany, even though you can't see it. And the tips are replaceable, but I've never never found a full set of tips. Usually you only find them with the one tip in them. Sometimes you find them with a twist rather than the standard gimlet to them. This one, the handle somebody obviously replaced on. Here's a little different handle. And originally, <clears throat> I was trying to buy enough of them with the same style handle to make a complete working set of them. Needless to say, that never happened. But, yeah, they're fun to collect, and they are handy. I mean, they're very usable for starting small holes, getting in, and also for making tapered holes, because you can just go in as deep as you need to go with a small one, and then just keep increasing the size to get to where you want. Uh, this works well when you're doing uh, tank chisels, uh, doing a handle on a tank chisel which one of these days I'll cover when I do a chisel restoration video. They are still available. This is a newer one with metal handle. And sometimes you see them with iron handles as well. But they're neat tools, they're collectible tools, and fun to use. And here we have a pair of brattles. These are neat tools. Basically, it's got a point sharpened on both sides, a knife edge. There's a shoulder to prevent it from going back up into the handle. And the way these get used is you basically put it in perpendicular to the grain and you start twisting. And you just rotate it back and forth. As you can see, it's, you know, this is a gnarly old piece of something here, but I got in a good quarter of an inch there with hardly any effort. Sorry about the shadows. Um, these also are getting very hard to find. I might find one or two a year or three or four if I'm real lucky, but again, I was hoping to make a match set of them for myself and never got around to that but they are again neat tools collectible tools this is another five minute flea market type deal uh, this guy I've been dealing with almost as long as I've been selling tools he used to set up and sell at the flea markets but now he's uh, semi-retired, as he calls it. He still hits a lot of auctions, still sells online, and occasionally he'll put together a box or, box or two or three of tools for me. Uh, there's this frame that's got a bunch of center point bits and a, a steel handle or an iron handled uh, gimlet on it. I don't need to take those off, but they're just wired on, thankfully, and not glued. And... I always get a kind of eclectic mix from them. There's a nice wood carver's mallet, a wood uh, uh, record, Stanley Bell system claw hammer, some bevel squares. I see at least one perfect candle screwdriver down there. Uh, gouge. Nice looking um, dual fret saw. Marple's Miter Square, Champion Ball Peen Hammer, a uh, Chairmaker's uh, Hollow Auger, adjustable Hollow Auger, uh, a couple of Trammel Points, Saw Filer, uh, another Saw Filer, uh, Spoke Shade. This one's got a, the blade's kind of warm, but it's got a bone or ivory. Uh, uh, mouth sole on it, which is kind of neat, and the uh, hand chuck. These are also handy items. Uh, six inch uh, machinist rule. Yeah, it's a starret. 
combination square rule. I think it's a six inch. It doesn't look like it was cut down. And ooh, another one of these little Stanley hammers, which he had in the last batch. And this was the second box. It's a couple of uh, longer machinist rolls. A uh, hand port slate ripper, which this one's not too long, so it won't be that much of a problem to ship. A really, really neat machinist surface gauge, an adjustable one. I can't say I've seen one like this before. That's going to take a little research. Oh, it is signed. Read the name. I can't read it without my glasses on. Um, good looking bung auger. He does clean some of the stuff up, but he does a pretty good job of it. I might have to do some touch up. Uh, some big uh, tri squares, Stanley. Distin, another Stanley down there. Kind of a different um, metric caliper. I'm thinking it's a medical tool. Something to research. Another spoke shave. Uh, can't see the name on it, but it's boxwood. Nice box scraper. Scorp. Got a neat, uh, neat tea auger handle of sorts here. Never seen one like that. Another hollow auger, Chairmaker's hollow auger, spoke cleaner. Guess it's about time to do a video on those. Big uh, plain iron. A uh, circle cutter, gasket circle cutter, although the one blade is missing in it, unless it fell out and it's in the box here someplace. And that's pretty much it for this load, but I pay a fair price for them, but it gives me something to do. I did some more research on this guy, and this is a Charles Fay patent, uh, September 23, 1884. It was made by the Stevens Arm and Tool Company. They were a maker of guns and machinist tools. They worked in the machinist tool era from 1864 until 1903 when they were purchased by Starrett. Uh, and Fay also went to work for Starrett or continued to patent tools for Starrett for a while. And this was in uh, good shape to find adjuster works on it. I did do a little cleanup on it, but it sure didn't require much. But it's a pretty neat tool, not a very common one at all. And that's all for this one today, folks. I hope you enjoyed my little presentation, as always. And if you want to be notified when new videos are posted, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and bye.